Hey friends, in recent times, we have seen an unfortunate rise in the cases of COVID-19 and 21. But most of us are not aware of how this tiny virus can cause such a big mess inside our bodies. So, in today's episode, let us see the journey of a coronavirus and explore its evil plan to conquer its victim. Zoom in! Like any microbes out there, the coronavirus's primary goal is to expand its species through reproduction. So, let us see how the virus achieves this, starting from peeking inside the virus where we can find the genetic materials needed for making multiple copies of itself. This genetic material is covered by a protein shell to protect it while traveling inside people's bodies. And this shell is coated with an outer layer that allows the virus to infect healthy cells by merging with its outer membrane. And finally, we can see the spikes of protein molecules pointing out from the outer layer. The coronavirus uses these protein spikes like a key to get inside the healthy cell in your body. There it takes over the cell's internal mechanism and restructuring it to develop the elements to form new viruses. Let us see how. Yes, once an infected person coughs or sneezes, the liquid droplets carrying the virus may end up on someone's mouth, eyes or nose, which allows the virus to enter inside their body. Once inside the body of the new host, the virus attaches itself to the healthy cell lining of the nose, throat, airways or lungs. Then they start executing their master plan by inserting their spike into the receptor molecule of the host cell membrane, just like a key in a lock. This process permits the virus to get inside the healthy cell. In the case of a common flu virus, it would travel inside a sac made from your cell membrane to your cell's nucleus that stores all its genetic elements. But when it comes to the coronavirus, it doesn't need to invade the host cell's nucleus. It can directly access the parts of the host cell known as ribosomes, which utilize the genetic information from the virus to produce viral proteins, such as the spikes on the outer layer of the virus. After this, a packaging structure in your cell carries the spikes in vesicles, a structure within or outside a cell consisting of cytoplasm liquid. This process allows the spikes to merge with the cell's outer layer, and all the elements required to give birth to a new virus gather just beneath the cell's membrane as a new virus pops out of it. And this process is repeated again and again as the virus multiplies and spreads in the victim's body, leading to severe pneumonia. How? For that, let us first enter into your lungs. As we can see, each lung has separate sections, which we call lobes. When we breathe, the air moves freely through your windpipe then travel through the large tubes called bronchi and then moves through the smaller tubes called bronchioles and finally enters into tiny sacs called alveoli. Your airways and alveoli are pretty springy and stretchy. So when you inhale, each air sac expands like a small balloon just to contract when you breathe out. The alveoli are surrounded by tiny blood vessels called capillaries. Oxygen from the air we breathe passes into your capillaries, whereas the carbon dioxide from your body passes out of the capillaries 
into your alveoli so that the lungs can push it out while exhaling. When germs enter your body, your airways trap most of them in the mucus lining of the windpipe, bronchi and bronchioles. These tubes contain hair-like cilia that constantly wipe the mucus and germs out of the airways and body through coughing. And in case any germs manage to pass the mucus and cilia, the immune system gets activated and attacks the germs that enter into your alveoli. But in case of a weak immune system, like in the case of a coronavirus attack, the virus can outnumber the immune cells to enter the bronchioles and alveoli, resulting in its inflammation as the immune system puts extra efforts to fight the spreading virus. This inflammation can cause the alveoli to fill with fluid, making it hard for your body to get the oxygen it needs, leading to pneumonia, which can come in two forms. Yes, a person infected with coronavirus could develop lobal pneumonia, where one lobe of the lung is affected, or this virus could lead to bronchopneumonia which damages many parts of both the lungs. And once that happens, the person might start to feel some minor symptoms like headache, body ache or fatigue, or major symptoms like chest pain, coughing, difficulty in breathing, fever and even confusion. Or worse, it might lead to severe complications like respiratory failure, in which the breathing gets so difficult that the person needs an artificial oxygen supply through ventilators. But these symptoms will depend on a lot of factors such as your age, the condition of your immune system and your current health status. But here is good news my friends. After intense study and research, scientists around the world have managed to develop a vaccine to fight this virus. Yes, the vaccine contains a part or dead version of the virus, which is injected into the person's body. This is done to expose your body to a weaker version of the virus to stimulate an immune response, so that in few weeks, your body starts producing the antibodies to fight the stronger version of coronavirus. And if you want to know the vaccine process in detail, do check our video, How Do Vaccines Work? The link is in the description below. Also, remember my friends, fighting this virus is the responsibility of each one of us. So make sure to follow the safety methods mentioned in our previous video to stay safe and save the world from this deadly pandemic. Trivia time! Did you know most people who get COVID-19 recover from it? Yes, most people who get COVID-19 have mild or moderate symptoms and can recover thanks to the healthcare staff who are working day and night for us. Hope you learned something important today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out.